Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to my channel. I'm Frank. I've been printing for a little over two years now and I've used a multitude of machines and I've had to do maintenance on a few of them. Things break, things go wrong, and most of the time it's kind of user error. Whether or not you're finishing and sanding and painting your 3D prints or just going for more of a raw look, you need to get the machine to work properly. So for this video, I'm just going to take you over some basic components of the machine, problems I've had in each of those areas, and what I do to kind of fix them and rectify them, and just general upkeep and maintenance that I do. So let's go hop in the garage and take a look. I'm not going to spend the whole video covering all the different types of 3D printers. They all basically operate the same way in regards to FDM plastic printing, where you use a hot end to melt the filament. We're really going to be focusing on something like the Ender 3 because that has all the basic components. And if you're going to run into problems on an Ender 3, it's going to be pretty, pretty similar problems that you're going to run into the Sovol or the Ender or the Max or really any other type of 3D printer. With some of the basic things being like the extruder, the gantry, the bed, parts similar to that because those parts exist on almost every type of 3D printer. Now, as some of you know, I just moved back to America and had to pack up all of my printers. So I just recently rebuilt this Ender 3. And this is a perfect time to kind of check over the common things I look at, whether it's brand new out of box or rebuilt after I've been using it. First thing I'm constantly checking is everything tight and level. I see so many printers all the time where your gantry head is loose and wobbly, the bed isn't level, your frame's not built right, something's loose that shouldn't be. If the printer is moving in ways it's not supposed to, well, it's not gonna print right. Checking to make sure your eccentric nuts are tight, checking to make sure your bed is level, everything's nice, tight, and square. These are key things to look at in basic maintenance for printers. Things loosen over time and bearings wear down. If you guys want more information on this, please go check out my How to 3D Print Video 4 Tips and Tricks because I take you over the entire printer in way more depth than we're going to go in in this video, but I'll cover a few of those. Nearly all the tools you're ever going to need to do basic maintenance on your printer typically come with it. The wrenches, the Allen keys, and a little screwdriver. This little double-sided wrench is your best friend because that lets you check your eccentric nut to make sure nothing's wobbly. It'll also let you tighten your bed up so it doesn't wobble left and right. So we know the printer's built right and everything's assembled. What next? Now, it doesn't matter if you have a magnetic bed like this, a fiberglass bed, or a glass bed. A clean bed is a happy bed. Now, if glue sticks and tape works for you, that's great. I don't use any of that stuff. I used 91% isopropyl alcohol and I cleaned my beds, my magnetic beds, my glass beds, everything. Any bed I have, I'm using this to clean it because it helps with the adhesion so much more. Simple maintenance, it doesn't let things gunk up. If you're having trouble with adhesion and the print's actually sticking, you might just have to level the bed again. You want that perfect swish. The nozzle should be pushing the filament out to the sides almost, but not so close that your extruder is clicking and popping and no filament's coming out at all. Next up is one of the parts that probably scares most people, your hot end or having to disassemble it because you have a clog. Now let me just explain, just because you have a clog nozzle doesn't mean there's actually something stuck in it. Did you run sand or glass through it? Are there pieces of metal? No, typically it's just more plastic. But sometimes it gets so clogged, your Bowden tube backs out just a little bit, the plastic can't melt properly, or there is a little bit of gunk in there that it, the filament won't push through and it's clogged. If you remove the screws off of most basic hot ends, they kind of look like this. This is a Mark 8 hot end from a standard Creality printer. Solval uses them, Voxel Lab. These are, this is a very, very common hot end. Understanding how this whole hot end assembly works, understanding the construction and not being afraid to take it apart really just benefits you in the long run. What a lot of people don't know is that the Bowden tube pushes all the way to the end of the nozzle. So if I actually unscrew this nozzle and take my Bowden tube, I can push the entire Bowden tube all the way through. And if you screw the nozzle in, it's gonna butt right up to the back of it like that, and that's where you get your pressure from. A lot of time clogs come from the very simple fact that your Bowden tube backs out a little bit. Now this can happen because this coupler starts to fail or blow out. If your Bowden tube backs out too much, it'll destroy the teeth inside of this. So if you start to have a really bad clog, just replace this coupler. There's teeth in there to grip the, um, the Bowden tube and hold it in. This is why I always suggest replacing the stock white Bowden tubes because they get uh, smooth and uh, kind of knurled up a lot easier and they'll start to back out over time. And if you're ever having trouble getting your Bowden tube out, if it's just too stuck down there, again, heat up your hot end and you can unscrew this. It'll just slide up the tube like that and then you can pull the entire Bowden tube out. It might take a little bit of force. Taking your Bowden tube out and removing your nozzle occasionally is a real good way just to clean everything out. I'll run a pipe cleaner or something else through there to kind of clean out any of the gunk and it should be nice and smooth in there. When you install a new Bowden tube, make sure this is nice and cut flush. Sometimes the Bowden tube comes with these cool little nippers that you can put right there and cut it perfectly square. The other thing I'll do is I'll usually take a razor or something and I'll mark the Bowden tube just a little bit, putting little scores and cuts just into the outside of it 
to give it a little bit more grip and bite so when it goes into the hot end, the coupler right here has more to grab onto, so it doesn't want to come out as easy. Now, direct drive systems are a little bit trickier. It's basically just taking your extruder and throwing it onto the hot end. So you don't really have a Bowden tube anymore. The extruder is pushing the filament directly into the hot end. They're a little bit trickier to take apart, but it's the same concept of filament being pushed through the hot end. And if there is a Bowden tube inside that direct drive system, it could back out, it could fail, or your nozzle might not be all the way against the tube. Another little thing people overlook sometimes is the tension on the belt. You don't want these belts guitar string tight where it feels like you can you know, play an instrument on them but you don't want them so loose that there's a potential for them to skip the teeth so usually there's a way to adjust them by pulling the couplers out newer printers even sometimes have little adjustment knobs to help you add tension or release it it's a lot easier so just make sure your belts are eh, in a good in good shape another good thing to have is a little bit of grease I believe this is white lithium grease and it's absolutely great for your z-axis rods just keeping the, the the rod itself greased up and lubed so it moves up and down without any binding and this can also help eliminate squeak you can get this super cheap on Amazon and I was able to grease up like 15 printers with just this little guy. Also, another common failure point I see is people not tightening this coupler nut down here so that rod, when they assemble it, it just wants to spin in place and your gantry won't move up and down. Another thing that can kind of wear down over time are your roller wheels. Now, I've yet to replace a single roller wheel or bearing wheel on any of my printers, but I have a whole extra pack in case that starts happening. Obviously, with the increased tension against the rails, up and down, back and forth, over time, they are gonna wear down, especially on my Ender 5 Pluses, which have a lot of residue on the tracks just from the tension of those wheels. So having a couple extra of these isn't a bad idea. Just make sure they're the same diameter or else you could probably run into some weird issues. But they're very easy to replace with just the tools that came with the printer. Now, for those of you who don't know, your extruder has a very tiny gear right here that spins and grabs the filament with using a little bit of tension. There's typically a bearing on this and it pushes against it and it, it knurls and rolls the filament through and pushes it through the Bowden tube. Now on this is a very, very tiny screw on two sides. It's missing one screw here, sorry. And on this little um, gear bearing arm right here, or whatever you want to call it, the rod that comes out of this stepper motor, there's a flat side. And one of these little screws needs to be pressed up against that flat side and tightened. So as this little rod spins, this just doesn't spin around it or not move at all and grab the filament. So if you're having weird extrusion issues and you know the filament isn't coming out, make sure that this rod and this entire gear is spinning properly. It's very easy for this screw to work itself out and it's actually worth tightening it very occasionally. I actually go every couple months and just take the Allen key, stick it right on there and tighten it up. But be careful not to strip it out because that'll just be the end of the world. Oh, that one was actually getting a little loose. I'm glad to tighten that. This right here, this this Bowden tube coupler, this is also usually a high fail area, especially if you're getting really bad clogs. It puts a lot of tension here, and then this coupler can just blow out and you have spaghetti. So you can do the same trick I do on the hot end by kind of knurling up the area where the coupler grabs and just sliding the tube back in and it'll stay and it won't want to come out. Aside from that, disassembling and cleaning your extruder occasionally because a lot of filament and dust starts to build up down in here, taking it apart and again, understanding the system better can really pay dividends in the end. A lot of people are very quick to go and jump at settings and the printer itself for causing failed prints, but 99% of the time it's user error. And I don't mean just in the G code, maybe your bed wasn't level, maybe your bed wasn't clean, maybe you didn't assemble the extruder properly, your Bowden tube is clogged. It's all things that can be prevented just by keeping up on your printers. Another problem I actually see people run into a lot is their wheels on their bed will constantly come loose. That shouldn't be happening. I level my beds once every couple months. You shouldn't have to re-level them after every print. If this is happening, getting yourself a little bit of stronger bed springs can really make a difference. These put a lot more tension on the bed so as the uh, knob starts to even loosen at the very end of that screw it's still going to have a lot of tension so the knob won't want to move as easily. And another thing, occasionally pulling out all the dust and stringing that uh, kind of gathers up in your hot end fans and your cooling fans probably doesn't hurt. You will lose your fans eventually from them constantly spinning, going through these heat cycles. You are They are gonna wear down eventually. Don't be afraid to replace them, they're super easy. It's just two wires. So if your fans aren't working, you can get them really cheap online. But you'll be happy to know, I've been running my original CR-10S for mm, two years now and never had a fan go out. Though my heated bed did just recently get out. I'm gonna be honest guys, there really isn't much more that goes into this. Upkeeping your printer and understanding it are just the best things you can do. When something goes wrong, you know why. Everything has a cause and a reason. Aside from your main board just giving out or overheating or something or your power supply giving out, most things can be prevented or rectified by just simple maintenance. This is my little quick 3D printer emergency repair kit. It just has a couple layers and all that's in it is an extra hot end, a bunch of extra couplers, some springs, some extruder gears. Below that, 
I have nozzles and some hot end covers and that's about it. Like there's not much more I need to use to keep these printers running. Oh, and having a bag of extra Bowden tube really doesn't hurt either. I'm just gonna give you a couple examples of some failures I've had between my Ender 5s, my Solvals, my Max, my S4, just little things that I've ran into in the past. One problem I had in my SEO 3s is that my filament holder wasn't positioned properly, so as it was pulling the filament through, it was putting a lot of tension on the filament runout sensor, not allowing the direct drive extruder to pull it through properly. Simply repositioning this and angling it at a better um, position so the filament can come through worked wonders and it was printing just fine. My Pro V2 over here had a really bad problem with the Bowden tube blowing out. I'm not sure what happened from the factory, but this tube just did not want to stay in. I replaced the coupler with an aftermarket one, and I've never had a problem since, and the tube has yet to come out. I'm going to be honest, I haven't had really any problems with my Voxel Labs yet. This one did have a little bit of a clog, so it does have a uh, blue Capricorn tube on it now, where these other two are still just running the stock white ones, and I'm going to run them till failure. My CR10 Max actually had the exact same problem that my, my Pro V2 did because they're the same printer, just bigger. The coupler here on the extruder kind of gave out. I'm usually not the biggest fan of these dual drive extruders. I think they put too much tension on the Bowden tube, but once you get it figured out and you get this tube in there properly, you should never really have a problem. Another issue I see people have is a lot of dust and buildup coming uh, happening on the runout sensor, and you can print out little rollers or adapters to help guide the filament into the sensor and not have dust buildup anymore. I've kind of upgraded the bejesus out of this Ender. Haven't really had any big problems that I haven't covered on it. Now, these are my two Ender 5 Pluses. This one I bought from somebody. So I'm gonna go through all the same trials that I went through with these and getting it calibrated. I'm gonna put a bigger nozzle on it and I'm gonna make sure the bed's level and everything's tight. There was one very interesting issue I was having with my 5 Plus that took me a little bit to figure out. It wasn't homing properly. And it was actually because this cable over here was hanging down. So when it auto-homed, it was clicking the sensor thinking that zero wasn't where it was supposed to be, causing it to get all messed up. It really threw me for a loop until I was paying attention while it auto-homed. If you guys have any comments, questions, concerns about anything you've seen in this video, please let me know. I like reacting to these videos or at least answering your questions down in the comments and it constantly gives me new ideas for future videos and what you guys wanna see on the channel. And leaving some type of comment really helps the algorithm reach more people with the video. And as always, please guys, don't forget to subscribe. It really helps the channel grow. That just about does it for this video, guys. As always, thank you so much for watching and you have a good day.